Can you hear that? Yeah, awesome. There we go. I love that. Like that cadence. Da -da -da, da -da -da. I know. It's honestly some of the best music. I've I've listened to the soundtrack just on repeat during the work day just because I like it so much. All right. Before I get um, you know, <laughs> we're gonna get copyright strike. Uh, <laughs> good afternoon, everybody, wherever you're watching. Um, I'm Malfunction. I'm joined by Jason Drake. Uh, today we're gonna talk about everything Godzilla and his love for Godzilla, him and his brother, Micah, who's not with us today. He's doing something else. Uh, but I am very excited about this because I have watched a lot of Godzilla films. Um I don't know which ones I have or which ones I haven't because I've watched so many and I've watched a lot of Japanese movies. So even this morning I was watching um, ah, a movie from 1962, actually two of them, nice. and um, but Samurai. And then so I went online, right, to find out what else the character and then it turned out to be there was a lot more that the character, that, uh, Shintaro Katsu, he, he wasn't uh zatu ichi which is like the blind swordsman in japanese thing yeah. uh ichi is just a name zato means blind uh blind people were the lowest of the low in um, japanese society the disabled the deformed the um they were just a bit higher than criminals in, in japanese society man yeah and this was yeah so this movie was set in um in the edo period just after um, Westerners had come into, you know, they had guns at this point, they had guns. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I was looking at all that and then I was like, all the movies that Sintaro Katsu has made and then also <laughs> how he had crossed, his character had crossed over into Akira Kurosawa's, uh, Kurosawa's uh, movie. Oh, gosh, I'm going to forget what it was called. I know Sanjuru was the second, Sanjuru was the second one. Uh, the first one, the one that was that, that uh, Sergio Leone ripped off and made into, um, oh gosh, Fistful of Dollars. Um, oh, I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, let me just bring it up. So it's uh, Akira Kurosawa. And, and it was like, it's like going down this journey of like history and, you know, um, checking out all these movies that some, you know, Japanese people have, um, you know, directors have made them into amazing stuff. And yeah. the reason I'm going about this is because we're going to bring it back to Godzilla. And, um, but the, there's a journey here, right? Uh, yeah. With all this, let me see where's his biography. Ah, film photography. All right, let's see. Film work, film work, film work, film work. Um, it's going to take me forever to get this. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so um, oh gosh. Anyway, so the, um, so he wrote he wrote a letter to Sergio Leone and said, "Dear Leone, uh, dear sir, uh, I have um, I've just watched your film. It's a very good film, but it's not your film." Wow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like boom. And plus, <laughs> the other thing is that um, his uh, uh, Sergio's um. Sergio's um, wife and his um, biographer said yes. Sergio had actually taken, had seen wow. this movie, which I can't remember right now. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up. Maybe it's in Jura would bring it up with the other one. Because um, I hate um, not remembering, knowing. Um, actually, hold on. Uh, Sanjura. It's a long way. I know we're getting to there, but we'll get there in a minute. Yeah. Because this is very important. The history of Japanese cinema is vast. It's huge, eh? And it's crazy how much, how little people know about it. It's 
it's yeah, it's it's just um actually I just said it. I think I just said it, didn't I? I said Zato Zato Ichi. I did say it. Oh, yeah. it might have been is it is it the Magnificent Seven, which was the No, no, it's full of dollars, but Zato Ichi is the is the original. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah. So it's based off that film, if I remember right. So the blind the blind swordsman. And that series itself, just like Godzilla, right, mm. has a vast history. Like, I mean, you know more about Godzilla. So, but Zato Ichi with Akira Kurosawa, Fist of Dollars. And we've had a bunch of like that sort of transition from um, Japanese movies and um, the directors moving into American cinema. Um, yeah. And the other thing is that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, Bollywood's like that as well. Bollywood takes a lot from western movies and makes them bollywood indianized and stuff and so indian cinema is does a lot of appropriation if you want to use the word right and has mm. for decades there is a movie called um uh Shole, and you could almost see akira kurosawa's fistful of dollars um in that as well wow yeah so in that roundabout way Introduce yourself, my um, Jasha, and tell everybody who you are. Yeah. So, hey, everyone. I'm Jasha Drake. Uh, I live here in New Zealand, and I guess I guess I'm here. We we started up a podcast real recently called Podzilla. Myself and my brother Micah, um, because of as we've said, I guess we've both grown up loving Godzilla, uh, loving the movies, and just thought, hey, why don't we revisit them and watch the rest of them and do it in a fun way. But yeah, um, during, during the day, I guess I, I work as a marketing and advertisement um, coordinator, and I'm I'm just a big old nerd, really. I've, this isn't my first podcast either. I'm a bit of a podcast fanatic. I, I have a Dungeons and Dragons one and a few other ones. So all around nerd, but I really yeah. love Godzilla. Yep. Right. So, I mean, to actually pick on one specific character out of, you know, the vastness of everything, you know, because... Yeah. Um, and not only that, but a monster character who's – and to do a podcast just about that individual character, which yeah. goes back – like, I mean, we were just looking it up, 1954, the original movie. Yeah. Uh, that is the original movie, right? So yeah. yeah have you seen cool. that? And did you did you go back and see all those movies, the old ones yeah, in so Japan? Well, I haven't actually – I still haven't seen them all. We've, um, it's, it's quite funny because myself and my brother, we grew up and our dad introduced us to Godzilla. And I guess we grew up watching all these old um, Godzilla Japanese-made movies um, from the 50s, 60s, 70s. And no one else around us – like, we're talking about Godzilla at school. No one knew what these movies were. We were watching a lot of them in black and white or badly dubbed or um, subtitled. And just no one else was aware that the, these things existed growing up. So we kind of, it was something that we really love watching. Um, I, I never watched all of them. I watched um, quite a few. Micah only watched a couple, my brother. Um, but I guess Godzilla has become such a massive thing now, especially with the American remakes um, and yeah. uh, the new series. And everyone pretty much knows about them, but everyone kind of thinks, oh, Godzilla versus Kong, oh, the, the latest big blockbusters. And it's crazy how little people, like, people don't even know there's, like, about 60 other Japanese movies that Godzilla appears yeah. in. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Well, well, I mean, not only just the actual live action uh, with a dude in a suit, you know, yeah. going all the way back in black and white cinema. And, you know, and um, but also, like we were saying before, um, before we got on about, like, the CGI um, TV shows, TV movies on Netflix, uh, yep. the trilogy they've got on there, and also there was like um, I noticed that there is a um, there's animated series of Godzilla as well, like actual yeah. cartoons. Um, so I think um, there is was... Hanna Barbera did it. The the creators of Scooby Doo they did a Godzilla series back in the seventies or eighties, and I think that was quite popular at the time. But it's just been it's lost. Seventy eight. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, in 1978, so the, um, the crew of the research vessel, the Calico, in, investigates strange phenomena and often meets meet menaces that force them to summon Godzilla to help. 
<laughs> so it's like it's like this it's really uh interesting because you know um i'm looking at the uh, king of the uh, it's called godzilla king of the masters on the poster but the actual show itself i guess the name they've got on now is godzilla 1978 and 1980 and made for kids year seven yeah so yep you know and so you've got this like basically like um no scales, no nothing, just you know, this <laughs> lizard. It's just a lizard that looks like nice lizard. Nothing like the monster that we see now. I think as and, well he uh, had like a, a sidekick or a son called Kazuki, uh, which is like the, yeah, the scrappy dude to his Scooby Doo. It's crazy stuff. I <laughs> <laughs> real crazy stuff. I'm looking at it here now, it's like it looks funny. And but here's the thing about this, right? So there is a um um, um, looks like a mum. Um, sorry, I want to say mum dead. Two adults, uh, yeah. a black American kid with glasses. So he's a nerd kid. And then you've got a what may, what looks like a young girl with blonde hair. This is going way back to 1978. Yeah. And, and um, you know, children's TV. And you look at that and you go, wow, this is, you know, I mean, I look at how things are talking about inclusivity and stuff. It's like Godzilla's got a black kid. In I know, right? Show look at that. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and people just people just infuriate me sometimes when they think about hey, the people have you know, it's only now that we're changing things around. But there is but stuff the that other thing. even Godzilla, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a character. There's a there's a voice actor on there, Hilly Hilly Hicks, who's a black dude in there. Wow. And um, oh, do you remember um, Ted? There's a Ted Cassidy, I think he was in the Monsters. Um, and he's a big, huge dude. No, he was Lurch on Adam's Family, did a voice on it as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. For that show. It's just, I always look at, like, like seeing, oh, he was Godzilla, by the way. Lurch he, was Godzilla. Ted Cassidy played Godzilla. Oh, my gosh. Yep. In this 1978 show that ran for about, let me see, two years, um, how many episodes did they have? So it was a TV half hour episodes. Um, let me see. So, I mean, it's, I, I just love the history of these things because you realize that there's been so much that's already been around. So they had two yeah. seasons, um, 13 episodes in season two. Episode one had 13, so 26 episode series. And it basically mm. looks like a dinosaur, the little kid one you're talking about. Yeah, like a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> Funny your heads. All right, uh, so so there was that, right? And then so made specially for kids, a TV show made specially for kids to introduce them to Godzilla. After mm. you know, I mean, Godzilla is more pretty much a monster character. What is what you know? So what is it about Godzilla that you like? I guess it's just. Um... I, I, I'm a sucker for monster movies. Horror is probably my preferred genre. So I've always like, I love um, inescapable odds or massive creative monsters. And Godzilla's always had these crazy, him going up against really, really well designed. I guess it comes down to people in suits back in the day, but really cool characters, yeah. uh, really cool monsters, uh, really cool fights. And I guess going back into it, is now that we're revisiting the series, something we didn't really pick mm -hmm. up on, um, I guess, when we were kids. But a lot of the movies, especially the original ones, Shiro Honda was the director, they touch on serious mm -hmm. issues. Like the first one, I think, Shiro Godzilla is destroying the city, but it's supposed to be a whole allegory of um, the nuclear threat and hydrogen hydrogen bombing yeah. and Hiroshima and stuff. So it's, it's quite... I, I, it's really interesting, even just for the historical side. It's, kind of, so. it's, it's pretty, I mean, and the theme there, that's pretty dark. Yeah. Uh, in no, the no. sense that you're talking about like something like, um, you know, nuclear war and stuff. And of course, I mean, coming in uh, with Jap Japan having faced two nuclear bombs or atom yeah. bombs. And uh, there, you know, there's, because I watch a lot of cinema, uh, you know, a lot of uh, anime and a lot of uh, Japanese movies. Yeah. I mean, there's great. It reminds me of Grave of the Fireflies. Have you watched that? I need to. I've I've need to. I've heard really good things. Um, but it does sound along the same veins, like. Yeah, yeah. So Grave of Fireflies about two young kids dealing with nuclear uh, after the Second World War and um, just trying to find themselves, you know, in that situation afterwards, 
and dealing with it. And I think um, that's the thing about cinema. It's like you can you can talk about really. I mean, you wanted to be you wanted to go into filmmaking yourself, so you know here you are discussing films uh, <laughs> and his, historical films because I mean you know with, with something like Godzilla, like we're saying, it's 1954. This is like mm -hmm. what? Where are we? Was like 50 years ago? No, I'm 48. What was so that now? 60, eh? yeah, 70, like... 60 years Maybe? ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Years. You know, almost as old as old as my dad. Um, and yeah. so, I mean, there's so much history there. And then, so you from yeah after you know having watched that, what you know, what was the first movie you saw that sort of said, "This is it for me." This is the this is my one thing that I'm really excited about because everybody has that one thing, you know. Like yeah. somebody has like Star Wars, or you know they have Star Trek, or they have you know I don't know um, GI Joe or yeah. whatever fantasy. I mean, sorry, whatever fandom they're getting involved in. So what what was it that the first movie grabbed you somehow and said, "This is it for me"? I think because I'm I'm. I'm really into like Star Wars, Star Trek and stuff as well. But for some reason, Godzilla's just stuck out. And I don't, I don't really know if it's a pinpoint, but I think one of them was back in the day, there's a movie called Godzilla Destroy All Monsters. And it's yep. heaps of different monsters and kaiju and creatures from like all the Japanese cinema really coming together and all teaming up. Mm. And I mean, this was back when the Marvel Cinematic Universe and things didn't exist. And it was all these characters from different stories just all coming together. And it kind of like blew my mind a little bit. It was like, wait, how could this be real? And it's mm. been, I, I mean, that's kind of what inspired the podcast a little. We're, we're actually not just watching Godzilla films, but we're watching other kaiju and monster movies that tie in somehow yeah. and might show up later. And it is kind of, the more we so, think about it, it is kind of the MCU, like for back in the day or that kind of thing way back then, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I know that about like uh, like we're talking about um, Akira Kurosawa, and he was talking like uh, how yeah. some like Shintaro's um, Shintaro's character Hanzo, and um, and he, him bringing like Satoichi into his his own films as well, and yeah. because he liked the character so much, and then he actually changed his other movie to have that character as a and make it a Sanjuro, and I think we don't as you know like we think everything is. It's all westerns, the first ones that do everything. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, and that's Hollywood. Hollywood's the forerunner of everything. Yeah, invented everything. So, you know, for those people who don't understand what kaiju is, explain what kaiju is. Yeah, so kaiju is pretty much just a big monster. It's a big monster in a, in a monster movie. There's uh, kaiju. If you want to be specific, I call. I think there's different types of kaiju, and the big monsters are dai kaiju, and then there's kaijin which are human-sized monsters with powers. So it's real. It's been interesting <laughs> to have to learn the lingo for doing the stuff like the podcast. But, I mean, yeah, kaiju would be things like Godzilla. Even, I guess, Western releases, people might know Pacific Rim, movies like that with just yeah. people going up against massive threats. They're all, they're all kaiju. So um, I'm looking at the one with the Destroy All Monsters here on Wiki. And yeah, yeah. It was like 1968. Um, let me see what what other characters. Um, so they had Mothra, Rodan, uh, King Ghidorah, and yep. and Julius, and Juris, and Manila. I don't know. I know <laughs> Mothra. What is a Rodan? Yeah. Is Rodan the one with the wings? Like as yeah, like so a Liz, um, di dinosaur pterodactyl thing? Yeah. Big pterodactyl, and he's got like supersonic speed. Yeah. What about the um, King Ghidorah? So King Ghidorah um, or Ghidorah, yeah, he's the. You're probably not. He's a big um, yellow alien kaiju with three heads. Um, yeah, he was in some of the most recent yeah, um, American releases, but yeah. He was. Was he in like um, King of Monsters or the one before? Yeah, King of the Monsters. Yeah, it's pretty it's crazy that, though. Looking at like. Cool. I, I, I'll just say, like, looking at the list there, I I, I haven't rewatched this since I was a kid. Um, but Mothra right. didn't actually show up in a Godzilla movie first. Mothra had their own movie, Disconnected. Rodan had a separate movie. Um, Manda had a separate movie. Varan, all these random monsters that show up were all completely separate until 
kind of this thing came out and just put them all together. So it's it is pretty crazy. Minila, Minila, M I N, sorry, M I N I L L A. Now, is a kaiju who first appeared on Toho's son of 1967 son of Godzilla, and it's yeah. the adopted son of Godzilla. You look, it's it looks like an eight, a great <laughs> eight, with like, uh, but with the mouth of a um, a turtle. Yeah, right? have you heard of it's Vanilla kind of, before? Have you? No. It's, this is the first time I'm hearing it. it. So I think it might be one of my favorite like, movies, Son of Godzilla. It's real cheesy, real old school. And it's kind of like yeah. become infamous in the Godzilla fandom. Everyone hates Manila. He's just the annoying son of Godzilla, doesn't know how to attack properly, doesn't know how to do anything, and always falling over and always clumsy. So he's kind of like, everyone hates him, but I don't know why. I've just always loved him for some reason. <laughs> but the other one looks uh, this injurious, injurious, injurious. And looks like a turtle. Yeah. Sorry? And Gears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, 1955. Uh, God's, oh, so it's the second one. So the sequel, uh, Godzilla Rides yeah. Again. And it's like a turtle with spikes. It's like a giant turtle with spikes. Has he got like six legs or four legs? He's got um, four legs. However, in um, I think in the movies, they often hide his legs because he's supposed to be on all fours and they had a guy acting in it who was on his knees. So a lot of the shots, yeah. it's hiding the back of him. But yeah, it's got four legs. <laughs> uh, it's, so it's like it's a it's a lizard with um, a turtle shell. Yeah, and or I think an Ankylosaurus or something. Yeah, but spiky, spiky back monster, pretty cool. So you got the Mangladon Gigan. Yeah, what's a Gigan? So Gigan's another, I think it's like an alien mech created by um, some of the aliens in the Godzilla world who sent this thing to Earth. It's um, it's um, That's Micah's favorite kaiju, even though he's never seen him in a movie. Okay. We just always grew up, I guess, with <laughs> trading cards and pictures and stuff. But yeah, there's so many monsters. It's, so, it's crazy. 19, uh, 1972, Godzilla versus Gigan. So yep. that's actually got like the, um, the three-headed one. And it's also got the turtle one as well. So it's that's got yeah. yeah, that almost feels like um you know a mix of all of them again. One thing I do like about the new movies is like this whole um for those who haven't seen the new one, about the yeah. uh spoiler, uh the middle earth thing, you know, the earth, the center of earth thing. Yeah. I find it really interesting how they did that because I think I love the sequence of how they go down and then suddenly it's like upside down and it's just you know I, I love the way that we can do so much with technology right now when it comes to filmmaking and you know with yeah. cgi and stuff and i thought the cgi and this i, I don't know i didn't see it in the cinema so i don't know what it looked like on the big screen um but i did have my you know my 43 inch very close to my face uh, <laughs> So I, you know, it looked really good. I mean, it, that that whole um, that whole transition into Middle Earth was really cool. I think. Um, so, is there moments like in other movies that you've seen from Godzilla that are those moments where you just think, "Wow, this is really cool." I mean, I, I a lot of the old ones, as I said, is all puppets, costumes, and I, I mm. there's a few times I guess when they go to alien planets. Um, things like that, which they change the landscape, real good use of props, kind of akin to how the Star Trek sets yep. were back in the day. Um, so you don't actually get a lot of those huge, I guess, cinematic moments in these, which is something I do actually, even though I probably prefer the older ones, I do love the sequences and the newer ones when they can do stuff like that, where they can truly yep. show the size of Godzilla and with the music in the background, it's just, it hits a bit different. Um, so it's pretty cool. I mean, Shin Godzilla, we talked about it a little bit um, before going live, but yeah. I think that's one of the most recent Japanese movies because uh, they had a big break between the early 2000s and then 2016, I think that came out. Um, but that was, I, I, it had a bit of that in it. They had different stages of Godzilla and just crazy character designs with CGI and yeah, some real cool stuff. Yeah, I want to see this one um, because it looked really cool. And it's you know it's it's like a, it's not like a short film it's a two hour film and it's mm. 
yeah, I think um, it's I, I I like I mean the music really sets it off just like like Jaws music sets it off you know um, yeah. it's it's very like I think it's very important like for the sound to be really especially when you have a monster that shows up that doesn't talk you know and yeah. you don't know there's not like a voice to it or anything like that or you know and you can't really get really good mannerisms until now where you could really yeah. get really good mannerisms with like i mean like it's the same thing like king kong, um, like king kong right with kong you you can um you can get really cool mannerisms with andy um god i can't remember his last name circus you know when he does this you know when he does yeah. his ape um um what you, um oh, gosh you know when he when he does close up um, CGI ape scenes and you can see his face just moving and contorting the way like the yeah. human mannerisms. Are That's real cool. And I think, yeah. yeah, and I think Godzilla with the new movies they've done that with it really, really, you know, you kind of like it gets you um, because I know uh, movies with that um, emotional contact uh, connection is just dead movies. I'm not even worth watching, and I think. Yeah. With the recent ones, um, they really have this real cool connection with that. So, what do you think about that sort of thing when it comes to like the transition from like you know puppetry and a man in a costume or woman in a costume to actual uh, CGIing the monster? Do you think what's your take on that? Do you think it's a yeah? You know, I'm a massive um, I guess not even Godzilla, but I'm a massive fan of practical effects. I, I I just so many things. I, I I love thinking about the way movies are made, and I'm always in like the IMDb trivia section after each movie I watch, and um I I just really love um practical effects done well. And there's too many instances I think that we all could think of of bad CGI in the past, um, and I, I I guess I look at movies like even Lord of the Rings with a lot of practical effects in the first trilogy, and perhaps The Hobbit adding CGI and it kind of detracting a little bit from that. I, I think the the latest Godzillas uh, have have done it really well in in, a, in the fact that I guess you put a guy in a suit nowadays, it's not really going to look too yeah. great. Um, but yeah, I I, I really I, I find practical effects really special. I think that's maybe X to the nostalgia or the flavor of the original God, um, Japanese movies for me. But you, you, again, you can't help but be at awe at some of the CGI fight scenes in, in these latest ones. It's definitely the way to go, I think, for things like this now. I um talking about suits and stuff. Um, and, and you know, car character um creature effects. I was watching um just this week. I was watching the Tomorrow War with um uh, is that Chris Pratt? Is that, yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. I haven't seen it. And it's it's got um there's a scene where they have the um a monster you know caged up or not caged up yeah. but chained up and uh, or the creature that they have in there. And I sort of think. I hope this is a real thing. You know, they've got all yeah. the CGI stuff. I can see all the CGI. I hope this this scene here is actually someone in it, or they've actually got um, animatronics in there. Yeah, you know, some yeah. robot stuff happening, moving because they could really, really make this work. They don't spend too much time on it, so I kind of think, well, maybe it's CGI because yeah. if they they could have really drawn out that scene, but they didn't. It was like too quick. And then it was like, oh, great, great, great. Then they get to the third act and they messed it up. The movie messed it up for me. But, you know, I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And they went the usual Hollywood way, which is like, let's go find a nerd who's, who, who can tell us all about how to save us. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how many times have we seen this happen in Hollywood movies? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like, Ring up the nerdiest nerd, nerd, nerd who knows about nerd, nerd <laughs> stuff that'll save us. And I was like, why? Yeah. You know, this movie was doing so well until the third act. And I was like, they could have just ended it here, or, you know, instead of adding that. So, do you, you know, talking about that, do you find in like with Godzilla movies where you've watched it and you thought, yeah, they should have just finished it here, or that, that, that they should have just not written that into it? Is there any, any which one that you found like um in Godzilla we've thought okay this is the that's that's ruined this now 
Yeah, I think like um, the older ones, definitely some of the story beats are a bit old school or are lacking a little. Like uh, a lot of the main characters are just 2D. He's just going to be the leading man. He's just going to be able to know how to handle every situation. Nothing real special to him, but they still managed to um, push the story forward in a, in a good way. I think the one that stands out is probably the America's first reboot of Godzilla, the 1998 one. Um, yeah. And it's they kind of took it. And then just gave it this boring story of a scientist looking at um, looking into Godzilla, the army getting involved. It's the same story beats. Yeah. The army's going to try and stop it, then realize they can't, and then and it's kind of just like they took they took what was quite cool back in the day, didn't really put yeah. much flair back into it, and just pumped out something that's perhaps even worse. Um, yeah, well, I, you hit, <laughs> like this. So this is the one with. Um, Jean Reno, who's the French guy who, who who's the yeah you know, the French come to save the day, and then you yep. got, uh Matthew Broderick, who's, yeah, uh, Nico Titopoulos. You know Matthew Broderick was the the um, a big name, you know, yeah, as an actor, totally he was right, a big name back then. And so you know he was, it was kind of like um, based around him, you know, being the hero and stuff with his um, you know being his um as a big Hollywood name at that time. Uh, and he was, you know, he'd been in so many things at the time, but John Reno, I think that was his first American breakout movie because. Was it? Um, Cause he was in Leon the professional. Eh? That's, is that John Reno? Yeah. 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 And also uh, Nikita, I think it was in little, yeah. little Nikita or something. And, yeah. um, you know, and, I, and I'd seen all that uh, as well. So, I mean, I watch a lot of French and um, German cinema. I watch, all cinemas and I enjoyed it. one thing I do not watch is Bollywood. That's one yeah, cinema yeah. I do not watch. I oh. just I just um I always I, it's the it's the singing and dancing that puts me off off it in a sense. Uh I, the only time I get to watch Bollywood movies or whatever they are is when I'm in Fiji. That's the only time because my cousin's True. always watching it and we just sit there and watch it. But when yeah. I'm in New Zealand I do not watch Bollywood movies. And you know, that's like every, once every four years I get to watch a Bollywood movie. But I mean, wow. they do they do amazing stuff with that there. But I think, um, you know, like um, with Jean with um, John John Reno, you know, he really he really sort of like uh, I think that was his breakout movie for into American cinema. With a lot of people, like I mean, when you when you're big named actor actress, uh, you know, out of um, other countries, you know, and you're you're made big enough name over there in your own country then they bring you into hollywood and then they say hey now you got to play this and you get and you get typecast into playing that role yeah, yeah it's like yeah. okay we need a french person who's the biggest french name <laughs> actor out there in the movie you know, yeah. or so on you know who's a who's a who's the biggest name um you know asian actor right now which is like uh semi lu you know with this uh yeah shang chi movie. Yep. yeah that, a character i've never heard of that I might have one comic somewhere. Yeah. You know, they make a big, huge movie about it. And he's like, and he's like, our Asian children will, you know, will will see themselves and believe themselves after watching this movie. I'm like, you've forgotten mm -hmm. all the all the cinema, haven't you? you? You don't realize all these great names of cinema like uh, Taka, 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 uh, Takashi, Hinta Takashi Kitano? Yeah. Takashi, no, Takashi Kitano is one of my favorite Japanese actors. He does a whole yeah. lot of uh, mobster movies. I love mobster oh, yeah. movies out of Japan. He, he's like done maybe about 30 of them or something. And wow. he's like the quiet, he's always a quiet, um, solemn gangster in the Yakuza and something. And he's like always calm and all this but Takashi Kitano is like one of the biggest Japanese um superstars he does like TV yeah. shows and stuff and all that is just right stuff uh sings the whole shebang wow. and um they haven't brought him over to, I don't know why they haven't brought him to America yet maybe he doesn't speak proper English <laughs> you know yeah like it's like what, yeah. they, do with, like, it's like what they what they did with Jackie um Chan you know it took a yeah, while for Jackie Chan to um, break out huge huge name you know but i mean so i mean so are you guys going to continue just talk um like um going through all the movies because i you do it a fortnightly right 
Yeah, um, so we do it podcast. Yeah, we're doing it fortnightly. We're um we're doing it in order of release as well. So I guess the one that I think the one that came out okay. this week was one called Half Human, which is not really connected to Godzilla, just a few small connections, and it's about a Yeti in the Himalayas. Um, but we okay. we we've, I think we've we've if we do it fortnightly, we've got heaps recorded beforehand. But it, it'll probably take us three years to get through all the main Godzilla stuff, and then on top of that, we also yeah. might go to other um other. Uh, I guess Japanese kaiju movies after that, or even touch on the King Kong series, and uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. I mean, it's it is diff- it's us kind of like re- reliving this nostalgia we felt as kids, which is real cool. Well, I was like, I was looking at, I was I was listening to what you guys thought um, when your introduction because it's really worthwhile listening to the introduction, guys, so you get your um, get an idea of really what their passion's about on this. Because I I thought, okay, so it's just Godzilla, and then I'm like. There's a lot of Godzilla movies, yeah. so like like you said, you, you know you're gonna get through one at a time. And like, so how long are your um? I, how long are your podcasts? Yeah, so we tried to do it under an hour each episode. I think they're sitting around forty minutes each, and we kind of we go over just the plot of the movie, um, touch on any um, human characters that stood out, kaiju characters that stood out where we might have seen them before. And then we just give our thoughts on it and kind of just talk about the movie a bit and then end with some trivia um, about each of the movie, uh, each of the movies we touch on. Um, but yeah, I, it, we've really been loving it and we've been learning heaps, which is real cool. And just a lot of stuff, I guess, as you said, with especially even Simu Lee's comment on um, Shang-Chi, he, he's saying it's probably going to be this big thing for um, all the children over there. And it's kind of like, yeah. it, there's been other things, but it is kind of sad that a lot of people don't know about them. So people probably, people yeah. probably are going to watch Shang-Chi and be like, well, this is new, this is cool, all the audiences, when a lot of people don't realize. So I guess a bit of our heart is to just see if we can um, get people to revisit these old classics, um, which are actually worthwhile. Yeah, I think, um, like like you said, there's so many more other um, kaiju uh, monster movies that you can talk about. Um, and. Yeah, I mean, like, at first I thought, oh, okay, yeah, this is going to be over. Yeah, they might run out of ideas, things. And yeah. I'm like, this is, you could go on for years, you know, I on know. each movie. But but then you could go into, like, then you've got the whole thing of the anime, the manga, um, not and, like, you got comic books that they put out. Yeah. Um, and then you got, like, the American animation. Like, you know, I didn't even know there was one. And now I realize that there is one. Yeah. And they also, like, some, they actually, they were saying there's like, um, gosh, there is a TV sh- series they put out in. Uh, there's a new one, like Singular Point. I think I've seen that. I think it's yeah. on Netflix. That's the most recent um, uh, anime series on Godzilla. I think it's anime. Um, but yeah. there was another one. I think I saw somewhere else. If there was, I'm not I think sure if they've a... done one in Japan. I think there was an American um, Can... TV show that came out after the 1998 movie a cartoon about that group of characters. So I think that's around there as well. I remember watching that as a kid, but yeah, there's a few. It's. I think this is like, this is, um, this was due to, um, this was due to, I guess the movie coming out and they decided to, you know, build up on the movie coming out. So yeah. it's got the same logo as the movie, the font and everything on the title. Yeah. The animation for on this is pretty good. It's it's yeah. pretty good animation and and um, and it's the Monster Wars trilogy. There's 40 episodes on that from 90, 98 to two thousand one. So that's a lot of that's that's a lot of story there. Oh yeah, it's de- it's based off the movie. So it's definitely based on the movie, guys. Like um, this and this direct sequel to the nineteen ninety eight oh, wow. movie. Yeah, yeah. So Doctor Nico Tetopoulos. Tatopolis um, leads a team known as HEAT, H-E-A-T is an acronym for it, to battle giant monsters with the help of Godzilla's only living offspring. Oh, wow. But the animation is pretty good on this. Uh, it's better than the um, 74 one, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not so, you know, it's not so uh, dumb. I guess not so, I don't know, I, I can't tell about the story, but the animation is very um, low key. Compared yeah. to this one from '98, the animation is pretty cool. Um, now, so you got with this with Godzilla, you've got the characters like um, 
Mothra. You've also got. Did they actually take um, as part of the Japanese movie uh, movies? Did they bring Godzilla into? Uh, not Godzilla, sorry, King Kong into there, or is it just an American thing to have King Kong in it? Yeah, so it is. It, it's interesting because I think um, they, uh, the American, the original King Kong came out. Um, I think it might have even been before Godzilla, and Godzilla was pretty much um, Japan, Japan's answer to King Kong. Um, and they ended up creating their own um, King Kong in a movie called King Kong versus Godzilla. I think it might have been, um, okay. uh, I might be wrong, it might be 50, 59, perhaps? Um, no, it's 62, 1962, King Kong versus Godzilla. And they kind of created their mm -hmm. own version of King Kong, looks a bit different, story's a bit different. And they made a sequel to that called King Kong Escapes. And it is, it's mm -hmm. very disconnected and it's not the same character you kind of see in um, the American movies, even though it's called the same thing. And yeah, uh, I, 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 it was pretty cool that they kind of built that up in the American ones to kind of do it again. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is, I mean, like I'm looking at the movie poster here on IMDb. It's you know, yeah. it's it's got the ape, it's got the big ape, and yeah. um, you know, it's got it's got Godzilla at the back. But I mean, yeah, I think what's it? King Kong's been around since the '40s, isn't he? Uh, with um, oh gosh, uh, it's pretty. Uh, is it in the 30s even or something it's he's pretty old um 33 1933 the king kong came out wow um so, so. 33 so oh, 40 no 21 years and then they put out uh, godzilla so yeah. so far how many movies out of the godzilla series out of all the godzillas how many movies do you think you've watched I've probably seen, I mean, including all the spin-offs and stuff, there's probably about 60, perhaps even more. I've probably only seen wow. not even half um, mm. and scattered about, like, the original, some of the originals, some of the um, Middle Era stuff and then some of the later stuff. So I, it's, it's pretty cool to, like, go back and fill in the gaps and revisit things I haven't seen and then something I have. And there's heaps. Yeah, it's, it's, it's honestly crazy how much I have. Um, we didn't know existed until looking into this. I mean, we've talked about the TV shows. I think there was even um, a, one called Zone Fighter in the 1970s, which is kind of like yeah. um, Ultraman, if you know of Ultraman and yep. those kind of Power Rangers-esque shows. And it's, it's this giant mech fighting a whole lot of different monsters, um, Godzilla being one of them. And it's kind of like you you find all these random little hidden movies and hidden gems that have been lost to time. So... We're, we're really loving it, and yeah, we're, we're really hoping some people could follow along, kind of be, be like a fortnightly film club type thing or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So with um, with uh, with having watched the movies, right? How much do you collect? Um, like, do you read the books? Do you collect the uh, figurines? Do you collect like posters? You know. What else is part of this uh, fandom of you know Godzilla? Do you get involved with outside of just watching the movie? Yeah, so I not too much. I, I, I wish I wish I got involved with more. We had some figurines growing up that I remember, but we don't have them anymore. Um, I do. I did. Ha I did collect a whole lot of Marvel comics back in the day growing up. I, sadly, I sold them. I shouldn't have because I had some good ones. But there, there was a Godzilla Marvel run back in the day. And I think Godzilla even crossed over with a whole lot of the mainstream Marvel characters. And I had a few issues of that. Um, used to read a lot of that. Um, and I, I guess other than that, we, I've got some of the Godzilla video games. Um, I guess we've got the poster behind me that's been in my lounge for the last little while. But yeah, I, I really, I, I guess this is a puzzle is inspiring me to kind of get back into it. I've seen some real cool um, collectibles coming out and I'm like, oh, now might be the time to start. <laughs> There is um so the recent news out of Japan is that they've they've got a um like you can do like a a, a what is that called a zip rope into um the mouth of Godzilla really or something like that some some yeah it's, it's something um yeah they were talking about that recently about how you, how they as a you know it's kind of like a Godzilla thing I'm not sure if it's a museum thing or something um yeah but yeah there's talking about something like that theater um a theater setup but i mean that's awesome 
you know, how many like how many of these Godzilla films have you seen in theaters? Yeah, so I saw not many. I saw um the 2014, the the latest um I guess reboot of the series in in theaters. Yeah. Um, I went and saw the New Zealand premiere of the sequel, King of the Monsters, and then I saw um yeah. Godzilla vs Kong opening night as well. And we, I've seen um Shin Godzilla. Other than that, yeah. a lot of them were before my time. I mean, I was only born in 1999. I even missed that the 98 yeah. remake, and not a lot's come out in that space. So. I'm hoping. I'm hoping uh, it's become a little more mainstream, and I'm hoping that maybe I will be able to see a lot more of these. Have you? I mean, like, do you know if they're going to do? I mean, of course they're going to keep keep going on with um, eleven. Um, you know, basically being the you know the um, the driving force for that movie. Um, yeah. As she keeps growing up, like as she can just keep doing it for the next thirty years know, right? as a child yeah. actress, right? Into her fifties and sixties. And yeah. um, and I mean, it's like it's like watching these, like you know, like some of these um other young um actors from the past who've got, just grown up and up and doing, you know, more movies. But I wonder if that she's got like a, you know, like a ten year, twenty year contract to do God's to be in Godzilla, and then someday she'll she'll have children, and then that child will be in <laughs> Godzilla onwards as well. And yeah, it's, it, I, mean, I think. Has that happened with like um you know talking about the, you know that sort of things with um with a Godzilla movie where the character carries on like you know or, and grows up you know into yeah that sort of situation where now you got like you've got like a dad now that dad's now a granddad now he's got you know he's got kids and stuff and so on is that part of the storyline in these uh, older movies or is that just something so just American? It's it's pretty much just American. I mean, back in the day. Uh, there's there've been a handful of characters that have probably shown up in two or three of the original series, but a lot of them are standalones and a lot of them as well have been played by the same actors and actresses. Like uh, you'd go from one movie, this actress playing a role and in the next movie, she's playing someone completely yeah. different, even though it's the same storyline. And so it is pretty yeah. cool seeing all these actors, I guess, growing up with the franchise, not playing the same character, but just continuing on. And I think I guess it happened before it happens. We talk about the Son of Godzilla Manila, but it probably happens more with like the monsters. There's a lot of those. Godzilla has heaps of different offspring, and there's different um, generations, and I guess children of monsters that show up, which is pretty fun. Talking about the character itself, Godzilla. Like I, I know that like um, what was it like? Um, in the most recent ones, like the you know the. Uh, Kong uses the scale of, um, you know, to destroy the Megal, you know, the Mecha Godzilla. And yeah. um, is there that's is what are the powers? Of, you know, there's there's that whole thing where he opens his mouth and this freaking laser thing comes out, flame yeah. comes out and destroys everything in his part. What are the, some of the powers that Godzilla has? I think it's just that he's huge, he's scaly, he's quite indestructible, and he does have. I mean, Godzilla. Um, the story goes that there's been some dinosaurs that have survived, um, whether it be in underground tunnels or things like that. And nuclear bombing awoke and kind of changed this dinosaur Godzilla and made him what he is. So he does have a, a atomic breath, um, a, a lot of uh, different, I, I guess, breath abilities. Uh, yeah. It, it, yeah. As you get further on in the series, you can see there's crazy stuff. He starts flying using his breath and things like that. He starts um, kind of evolving and he becomes a different form called Burning Godzilla where you can make stuff explode. It's, yeah, it's pretty basic, but they get a lot of random creative way, creative ways to show it later on. I wonder if, like, um, yeah, how do you, how does, like, geez, how does, you know, how does Godzilla with his, I don't know, thousand, thousand ton body starts flying? I mean, it's hard enough trying <laughs> I know. to figure out, like, Mothra being able to do it, but I mean, of course, she's got wings, but yeah, it's just crazy to think that he could use his breath to fly. Yeah, it kind of does make like, sense. Every time he, yeah, because every time he'd use it, you know, it'd be in the air, and there's no force behind it, just forces going outwards, but like, and then it would just be dissipating. But if he was going to the ground, there would be holes on earth, on the earth, you know. It's I like, think. The way they show it, he is flying. He's like blowing it forward, and he's in the air, yeah. and he's getting pushed back. 
it's pretty comical and i guess it's back when it's a guy to yeah. suit as well i think it's become a popular gif um, of him flying with his tail up but yeah it's there's a whole section of kind of the godzilla franchise where it goes starts off quite dark then gets very very comedic and fun and kind of aimed towards kids a little bit more before it then kind of grows up yeah. again um but you do just get random fights it's funny is uh, like with Godzilla with all the different monsters in there, is there like any other ones that your favorite apart from the you know Godzilla itself? Is there any other little ones that you go, yeah, this is my second on, yeah. on you know on the on the scale? I do like um it's pretty boring, but I do like Rodan, the giant pterodactyl. Um just being able to I guess uh we've got an episode about him coming up, but he, he's able to fly over things at massive speed and just instantly kill them with his supersonic um uh, with the speed it's crazy um and he's pretty basic but he's, he's pretty fun and i also i guess some of the monsters later down the track even just the ones that appear in one movie there's one called destroyer yeah. which is pretty much a mutated form of a bomb used to kill godzilla um there's biolante which is a giant evolving plant creature with multiple mouths it, it gets really creative and it pushes the limits of what they could do with suits and practical effects back in the day. So those ones always always stand out to me. Yeah, I think um, it's yeah, it's it's kind of like um, it's, you know, it's, it's weird. Like um, like when you like actually feel more for the um, for the monster than you do for the humans in the movie. You know, I yeah. find like sometimes I'm like, you know, it's kind of like you're rooting for King Kong, and you think you shouldn't, you should be actually rooting for, yeah, you know, for the humans. Yeah. And you realize that the hum, some of the humans are evil. They're the reason this is happening. You know, and that's, you know, it's, yeah, and you're like, yeah, go get him, Godzilla, go, go. Yeah. But I mean, there is there is that element to it where you're like, okay, I'm gonna side with the monster on this one now. Do you find yeah. like um? That sometimes you're watching and you you know there's some you know you you shift your your um, you know your your um, backing of the character to another character. So King Kong is just you know now yeah, you're backing King Kong against yeah. you know, against uh, Mothra, but then you think like Mothra's going to die, and now I'm going to back King Kong uh, Mothra <laughs> against King Kong. Yeah, so there's a there's a lot of that. I mean, it's um uh the original couple movies godzilla is the main threat he's definitely evil and you are back in the humans but then as it goes on um godzilla becomes the the hero of the all the movies pretty much he's always the guy you're rooting for and um it's i guess the humans become a bit of a back burner and i guess a lot of the fandom as well don't there's a, a, a bit of dislike about the human plot lines as films go on and people just want yeah. the monster fights they want to see what godzilla's storyline is so yeah. it definitely comes up, and it definitely you get it again when all those allies like Mothra, or Rodad, pop back into things. Uh, yeah, this, I think that happened with uh, like the fight scenes are really cool in the most re in the recent ones. Yeah, I, I mean I haven't seen Shin Godzilla. I'm I'm keen to watch it sometime soon. Uh, but like I mean, especially this last one. Um, was it King of Monsters the last one? Uh, it was King of Monsters and Godzilla versus yeah. Kong. I think. When was it? Like, it just came out, didn't it? Like, 2020. Yeah, I think so. Or was it even this year? No, it must have been last year. There's so many of them now. It's like, it all melts into one. Uh, no, it's 2021. Was this year? Because wow. this is cog. And that was a good movie. I must say, I, I do, you know, that was a memorable movie. I think, um, you know, having Kong go up against God Godzilla, it just, and then bringing in the Mecca, the way they brought it in the Mecca was interesting in how they um, introduced the Mecca Godzilla. Yeah. And But the crazy thing is you realize that there's so many people are dying in these movies. Like there's endless yeah. amount of people dying in these movies. And um, and that's one of the things I'm like thinking, like myself as a writer, I'm thinking like, <laughs> when is it? When is it too much when you're watching thousands of people to die and then you're gonna go, oh, I'm gonna pick on this one person to be the most important character in this book in this film, you know, in the story. And you're like, I don't really care about this one person anymore. Because you've already killed about a million people. Godzilla yeah. just appeared and just destroyed everybody. Kong's out there fighting, and now 
Kong and Godzilla's fighting, and there's like, how many people are going to die in this instance? <laughs> so they don't show the people, right? All these buildings yeah. are getting destroyed. So that's why you kind of go like, you, you dissociate yourself from everything else and you just go, monsters fighting, yay, yay, yay. Do you find yeah. like, um, do you have that moment where you go like, you, you got to go, well, I'm just going to like forget everything else and just watch the monster fight moment? Or is that something else when you see in the movies that says, you know, <laughs> it definitely is getting to that point. I mean, the first one again is very, very dark. There's a lot of scenes when you see a city getting completely leveled, and there's a lone mother huddling her children in the streets, saying, "Don't worry, you're going to go and see Daddy soon," implying the dad's dead, and they're all going to die pretty much and see him afterwards. Yeah. And there's people jumping off buildings. People, it's pretty crazy, and uh, they show it a lot in the older ones. And then again, you get into the slightly more comedic ones which a lot of that's just skipped over sure he's killing people let's not show it and let's just show the monsters fighting but yeah it is i i do i do really like the first one for that reason it has a real cool um i, I mean i love i love having someone to fight for and i love seeing the stakes yeah so when those kind of get lost a bit um it, the the mm-hmm. actual story kind of I, I don't feel that impactful um so a lot of those other ones I love. A lot of the, I, I guess the newer ones are probably the same. They didn't show too much of the actual horror of it, and just more of the, more of the fighting. But I, I know I, I like both of them. Give me a story with some dark undertones and seeing the stakes. Or give me some giant monsters fighting. You know, it's I'm, I'm happy the way. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like that, right? Yeah, and, um, exactly. And that's the thing about. That's what I think. Um, yeah, I think there's a fun element to it. There's a escape element to it, and I think that's the that's a cool thing about it when you can just go doesn't really matter it's a damn movie let's just enjoy it you know for yeah. what it is um it's like watching um, superman like go through buildings and you're like thinking how many yeah. people are in those buildings like yeah. soups doesn't kill people but wait soups he just murdered a whole bunch of people by just going through it well you didn't murder yeah. you you know you got through thrown through there by whatever his name is and like and suddenly all those that whole building's toppled over and you're like yay Superman. Yeah, I know, I know. But I, I quite like because that was um that was Man of Steel, eh? I quite liked how I, I guess they made yeah. Batman's storyline of that that yeah. he saw all the destruction and saw all the people dying, which was pretty cool. So I like twists like that. But you're right, it's kind of like we, we it's we often get sacrificed for the spectacle nowadays. Those those moments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I. I I mean that's that's that is part of the um the escapist uh, fantasy world we you know that we create as uh, you know in these stories with these guys that work on these I mean they've been working on this for what so many odd years and yet this yeah. we're still enjoying this monster doing his thing you know just showing up um like you said he was created out of a nuclear um what nuclear bomb or something yeah um, yep just is it um like you said um so these are like He's like a dinosaur that survived, uh, for you know, in the middle of the earth, and so a nuclear blast brought him back out. And, yeah. um, because that is that the, that's the story of the first one, isn't it? Yeah, it's the, the story original. of the first one. I think the, the 90s American reboot made him a iguana who mutated into a an alien, uh, not an alien, mutated into Godzilla, um, after bombing. Same kind of thing, but instead of dinosaurs, they wanted to make it a bit more real even though it is quite not real at the same time and i don't know i think the latest one's potentially the same it it was just bombing um it awoke something that we didn't want to awake so yeah there's this one that i just saw um like it's kind of like animated but then it's got like actual uh costume people inside these um, inside their you know inside the characters Uh, Uh. sorry the characters are actually costume people. And so it's like an animated plus real thing. And it's like aliens, dinosaurs that are able to enslave do- uh, like um, like Earth's creatures and turn them yeah. into – it's out of Japan. Uh, I think it might have been about 70s or something. And so they put their eyes into them. And so they, then, like, they come out of the Earth. <laughs> as creatures and it's like it's like live action sequences with like uh with us uh, animated ships and stuff and characters it's fun as and i think yeah. it's like um as technology has gotten to where it's gotten to like you you're able to do so much more I, i'm just looking forward to seeing where 
the next movie comes in. I mean, like yeah. we've already seen Godzilla, we've already seen Mothra, we've already seen Rodan, we've seen all um the three headed thing. Uh, yeah. what's his name? Um, Angus? No, not Angus. Garrus and Jadora. Jadora. Yeah, yeah, Jadora. And so it's kind of interesting to see, like, I mean, how far they will take um, the American the American series with these, you know, with King Godzilla versus Kong. Um, and let me see. So there's 2014, 2021, and there's one in the middle of that, isn't there? Um, yeah. 2019, King of Monsters. Out of mm. those three, which is your favorite? I probably like the, the yeah. I think I liked um, King of the Monsters the best. It was uh, again. It, I think it introduced uh, for the first one just had Godzilla, whereas the second one has Jadora, Rodan, Mothra, all these ones that I grew up with, and just crazy fight sequences, um, which mm. make me happy. So it's probably it's it's almost like um, taking the um, the Japanese destroy all monsters, yeah, and just um, yeah, and just updating it. To um, to King of Monsters and bringing all those characters into it, which yeah. is really cool because I think, I mean, you've got you got Rodan, you got Mothra, um, and you got yeah G Ghidorah in there as well. So the only thing I think it's missing is Manila. <laughs> yeah, Manila I know, right? And, Everything could use a bit more and, Manila in my mind. It's <laughs> wait, was Angus in there as well? Angus? No. I don't think so. They they showed a few other like different monsters getting around to bow down to Godzilla at the end of that one, but maybe they're saving him. Who knows? Maybe yeah, maybe number four will have those in it because like yeah. where, I mean I, I'm not sure if they want if they're gonna go past a trilogy because I mean that normally they like with American things I mean and storylines it usually works well as a trilogy because you got the first yeah. uh, you got the first act the second act and you got the third act. Uh, whereas in, uh, I think it's in Japanese cinema where there is like a fourth act as well. Yeah. And so it, you know, and so when you, when you're watching it, you go, okay, this is going to happen here. This is going to happen here. And then you go, this is going to finish here. When you're used to watching it, watching um, Hollywood movies, but then suddenly there's another arc. Um, do you, um, in the setting is a way that um, Japanese cinema is set up. How do you think it's like, um, What's the differences between do you think between Japanese storytelling and their cinema and uh, and if you if you have seen the difference between and Hollywood the way they do it between their storytelling and these because you've seen quite a few of these yeah. kind of movies yeah I, I mean I I probably a lot of them I can't remember to be honest um, mm -hmm. uh, the ones we were revisiting I mean I, I said I'm a massive fan of horror movies I've I've watched a whole lot of like the Universal monsters and a lot of the early American. I guess Wolfman, Frankenstein, Dracula, and I, yeah. to, in my mind, it doesn't really compare to the first Godzilla or those initial Japanese horrors. They they just yeah. they hit differently. They're a lot scarier. Um, the stakes are a lot. You just get a lot more involved. Um, so I think yeah. back in the day, they definitely had a handle on that. Um, I, I it's, it's inspired me to kind of go outside Godzilla now as well because I do want to watch a lot of these. Um, um, Japanese films that have inspired a lot of these yeah. American ones. Yeah, uh, there is that cool thing about that because, like, you know, like you're talking about the whole, um, um, early on, we we're talking about the whole franchise, <clears throat> you know, the whole um, early franchise of these things. I mean, like, you're looking back at what is it, like 60 or 56 or something with the story yeah. of monsters. I mean, that it's a 56, yeah, uh, 68, sorry. 68, 68 yeah. being like the you know and it's like the like you said like i mean just mentioned that universal monsters and so it's like this is the japanese monsters monster movie franchise and so yeah. i'm just checking to see um if they've got the 54 godzilla on actual youtube because i mean i'm sure that people can watch it on youtube now because it's so old yeah uh, that it should be available a lot of them to watch um... on youtube a lot of them are available. We haven't found them on YouTube. We found them on archive.org. Um, a lot of them are on there and they've okay. been uploaded by Toho themselves. So they are fr a lot of them are free to watch. Um, okay. And uh, it's cool to see that a lot of them are getting re-released as well. Like I know Criterion Collection and a whole lot of the digital media outlets are re-releasing these things even in 4K. So 
hopefully they do make the wider wider array of them more available. One of the things that, um, like once one of the things I've noticed when they try to uh, like um, oh, I was just watching this one anime just just now while I was working well my um, designing some logos. Um, yeah. Oh, what's it called? Darn it, forgot it now. Actually, give me one second. I'll be able to see it. <laughs> and uh, the reason the reason I'm mentioning it is because excuse me. The reason I'm mentioning it is because of what they did to the actual uh, American stuff. And this is the next thing oh. I'm talk about. So it's yeah. So it's based on a manga. It's called Samurai Gun, right? So yes. Yeah. Sorry. So Samurai Gun is about the same period, the Edo period. I think it's this week period. Is Edo period where uh, guns have been introduced. Western guns have been introduced to the sh um, Shogun era. It's just about the period where they're getting rid of the Shoguns because the caste system that the Shoguns brought in, which was like they ruled with an iron fist and they you basically served them as a slave, almost, mm. almost like in servitude to them. And they, when, uh, when the Western culture came in, they were like, well, we need prime ministers. We need leadership and that sort of democracy level where everybody's equal. And so there was that. So, but the thing about this uh, anime is, it's a, it was a joint effort between American and uh, American and Japan. Wow. Uh, based on the manga. And so what they when it got translated uh, when they dubbed it, it's full of swear words that doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. In, um, Japanese. Yeah, it doesn't exist in the Japanese um, series. And mm. like every episode is like has like atrocious swearing. It's like they've they've gone out of the way to like like put like f words as much as they could and i found it really yeah. in interesting because i was like i don't mind it but then when you see it so much poured into this anime that in the in the sub sub you know the yeah. story doesn't have it you're like why would you do this because now you've excluded a whole bunch of um you know if you because it's pg so if it's pg in japanese why are you now making it m m you know basically m15 for Western audiences, and I and I hate it when that happens. And so, have you noticed that when, when the dubbing of or like, if you're watching something like that, are you watching it in su subtitles, or are you watching it in dubbed versions? Yeah, which we're, we're trying to watch. Watching yeah, we're trying we're trying to watch a lot of them in, in subtitles. We have so far, which is real cool. Um, mm -hmm. interestingly enough, there was a there's a few. The dubbed versions of Godzilla back in the day were actually American re-edits as well. So there's a, a re-edit or Americanization of the first Godzilla that's all in English. And we've watched this one and they've actually added in scenes and cut out some. And all the scenes added in, they've kind of inserted this white American man into everything going on and kind of tells the story from his perspective and just kind of adds him into all the situations that he wasn't even in and kind of make him... Yeah get him to make all the big decisions on how to take Godzilla down. And it's interesting to watch. I think it's called Godzilla King of the Monsters, the remake of the, but it's the 56 version. Um, wow. It's, and it's, it's it a, changes the story. It's so like, I, I don't know if they yeah. were just wanting the American audiences to feel more involved, but it just, it loses a lot of that horror. It loses a lot of the stakes and it just, it makes it seem like this guy's just the hero. I guess it's the white savior thing all over again, which kind of sucks. But I mean, this is like way back in the fifties. They're doing it, or sixties, and it's like 50s, you know, yeah. it's like, and and sometimes they do. Um, I mean, like you said, they do it because they're trying to uh, appeal to a more Western audience because they realize that if you have that person in there, uh, you will get a bit more money. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. it's always about money. It's not about it's not about some pushing something. It's about the money. If if yeah. if we're gonna send it to this audience, we gotta cater to this audience with this sort of thing into it. And that's why I thought this whole thing with like putting so much swearing in this, which is totally unnecessary because yeah. you've just um, taken out your entire um, a younger audience that would watch it and um, mm. that'd be into it. And, uh, but I think it's just, I think the nature of the series, because it is a mature series, and they thought maybe they thought like because it's that, there's a lot of violence in it. What we'll do is we'll actually make it appeal to an older audience. And that way it'll cut out the younger audience because it's not meant for the younger wow. audience because yeah. there's a amount of violence in it. And that's all, yeah, that's all the thinking behind this. And that's what I sort of think like when when they transition these characters into a Western audience, what is their motive? 
and at the end of this, their motive is money. It's yeah, always I guess money. especially it's lately as well, you have like Deadpool and stuff, right? Which I'm a massive Deadpool fan, and you have the movies that have yeah. done really well as R-rated, a lot of swearing, a lot of violence. Um, and yep. it's kind of, I guess now, especially people are seeing that and being like, wow, if you make things R-rated, uh, people yep. will buy into it more or people will enjoy it more. So that's interesting that you bring up that. I need to, I might need to watch it and just see, see what it's like. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it, yeah, it's got some ray gun. Um, uh, yeah. and it's, yeah, it's, it's really, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty hardcore series. It's, I mean, like, it's, it's not like, um, it deal, it's, it's like police work. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, crime criminals and stuff. So it's not, it's not some something sort of fantasy orientated. It's just that real period that they had, and so yeah. they checked this into their. Um, and it's really, it's really well done. And I mean, I love summary movies and stuff like that. And I watch anime just about every day while I'm working. Mm. Uh, that's what that's the difference. But like, so I'm watching it because I don't have time to um, sit down and watch it in subs and read the subtitles. Yeah. And so I'm paying attention to the dub, and then I'm going because I can hear it talking, and then I turn around and look at it. And I'm going. <laughs> this, this doesn't sound right. This doesn't belong here. I'm sure this doesn't belong here. So I go and check yeah. the sub, and I go, she doesn't even say that. <laughs> she, like crazy. The character yeah. goes, yeah. yeah. The character goes, you're kidding me. Yeah. And I, and and instead of that, she goes, uh, that's effed up. I'm well, like, yeah. You <laughs> totally just changed the whole thing. You've actually used a you know a, a Western word. On top of being a, a really, you know, full-on um, curse word, and now you've just t- changed the tone of the, what she was trying to say. And yeah. it's it's hap- I mean, I'm, you know, I've noticed that a lot of time in the whole dub situation. So, I mean, that's what I find interesting because, like, um, if you're watching subs, uh, do you prefer watching the subs or do you prefer watching the dub versions? I am. Um... I mean, I've, I watch a bit. Of, I watch a bit of anime as well, um, and I, I, I always kind of growing up, I'll just put on dubs. Same for Godzilla, but I guess now as I um, watch more movies, watch more cinema, I always love seeing things as they were intended to be made. So a lot of the times, I do find myself going back to that subtitles, even if it's hard to watch um, uh, while doing other things, just so I can kind of get the feel for it, get the actual acting uh, actors saying what they were meant to say. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of like it, but you get it with like Studio Ghibli, which I'm also a huge fan with. You can watch the subtitles of those, or you can watch the um, dubs, which are, they've got really good actors and really, really yeah. dubbed it really well. So it's I, 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 a bit of both, I think. Yeah, uh, but the, the other cool thing is like even like like now I actually watch movies with the subtitles on because even oh, if, yeah. if they, yeah. even if they're in English, because you can go well. You know, because I'm watching, like, if you watch, like, um, uh, if you watch anime on Netflix, you, you, you know, you get, you laugh at yourself. I mean, I do. When you get the American, um, uh, you know, the English going on, and then you watch the subtitles go, that's not what you said. That's not what you said. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, go, why do they, try, why do they change it too bad? And, like, because I do, I, when I was at film school, I learned ADR, right? Audio, wow. um, yeah. audio dialogue replacement. And so, you know, when you have people like who are writing these um, uh, English ver- um, localizations or versions of um, of replacing the Japanese car- um, stories or whatever the um, vocals, and they sometimes I go, well, it's because that's what the syllables were. I'm like, I'm watching it myself. I'm going, and I'm speaking those words out that you're saying. <laughs> you know, this word would have been better in there. So, yeah. is there a is there a uh, like? Do you think? Um, So 1954 is your favorite out of all of them, and your and your most recent is um, King. Um, sorry, King of Monsters being the most recent one that you like. Now, out of all all the movies you've seen so far, apart from those two, is there one movie that sticks out? Do you go the story kicks butt out of everything you've ever watched in the Godzilla series? That yeah, you I think- recommend. Yeah, I think it would be. I, I I probably like it more than the original, to be honest. But it's Godzilla versus Destroyer, one of the ones I grew up watching too many times. But mm-hmm. it's, I guess, in the first the nineteen fifty four movie, they create this thing called the Oxygen Destroyer, which they um put it, turn it on when Godzilla's under the water, and it kind of takes all the oxygen out of the water and kills Godzilla. And it's a sequel to that, where some of the characters return. Um, 
which is a rarity in the franchise and kind of this oxygen destroyer mutates into this huge real cool looking spiky winged monster goes up against Godzilla kills him and then he kind of gets reborn and evolves a bit and it's probably got some of the best um, fight scenes some of the best story human characters and that real cool connection so I'm really I'm really looking forward to revisiting that with the podcast that's 1995 and it's yeah. got a pretty high rating on on uh, IMDb it's seven out of ten yeah so I think it's it's one of the most um, everyone loves it. So, yeah. Well, I know which two I'm going to be watching then. Um, the first <laughs> nice. one and this one. It'll because be a good I double feature. Like, yeah, you got a six point one k people that have voted for this at seven out of ten. That's pretty high. Hmm. Um, if we look at um, let's have a look at the other one, um, King of Monsters, and see what the rating of that is for for people. Because I, I I did like King of um, King of Monsters was pretty cool, but I did yeah. like the recent one because of the whole Middle Earth thing. I just love the whole cinematography there. Uh, yeah. So King of Monsters got six out of ten from one hundred sixty-five thousand people. Wow. Uh, so Destroyer still on top there. Let me have a look. Let's go back to uh, the most recent was King uh, was Kong. Okay, yeah. let's go to Kong. Godzilla versus Kong. Let's see. So the rating for Godzilla six point four. So Destroyer has got a huge. huge there you go. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's like I, I'm finding that I am. Yeah, and I'm, I'm finding that that is true. Like I do prefer a lot of these older ones than the new ones. So I'll, I'll super recommend anyone who does like the new ones check out the older ones because a lot of them uh, might actually be a bit better. So is it's Godzilla um, the original one? Is that been? Um, I like you were saying. Was that the one that's been like dubbed into English, or is it? Yeah, uh, no, it is that original one. So the dub of it, I think, is called Godzilla: King of the Monsters, but it's a um, nineteen fifty six version. Um, okay. And yeah, they've added in added in a whole lot, taken out a whole lot, um, changed all the voices, what they were saying. Uh, they kind of just kind of just made the the film. Uh, a lot less good than it was but yeah it's been interesting to revisit even all these bad bad ones just for the historical sake and learn about them all right and finishing because i only actually for about an hour of your time but we've got hour and 20 out here and me yabbering away about all these films (laughs) but i i think um where do you where do you um with your podcast, I like. Do you think you'll do um, like? Will you only do one um once every two weeks, or would you guys make more? Do you clip your um um like because you say you do about forty five minutes to an hour long? Do you guys like um shut um? Do you like trim out some stuff, or do you just go hard out and just you know leave it as it is? Uh, a lot of it is um a lot of it is pretty much just as we recorded it um we there's little bits and pieces and times we probably go on a bit too long that we do cut out just for listeners sake but um yeah it's fortnightly pretty much as we record it and i guess well we're thinking of keeping it fortnightly just to keep keep, give people enough time to watch the movies with us if they want to um but there's probably going to be times like coming up we've got a couple american um remakes or re-edits again back to back we're like oh why don't we do this together make it one episode or at least two episodes at once so there might be little special things like that but we'll see how we go the other thing i was going to ask is because it's a podcast so it's only voice right yeah yeah um at the moment i guess we'd love to get to the point where we can potentially do some video content um uh, and i guess we're thinking about even touching on some of the books or the video games as part of the series so you might do us see us doing some streams playing some of those video games or something at some point so yeah we'll see what the future holds so um now before you uh, finish and have your final word uh where can they see your uh, podcast or hear your podcast yeah, so we're, we're Podzilla. You can find us where um, wherever podcasts can be found, really. Hopefully, we're everywhere there. Um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Um, you can also uh, follow us a- along on Twitter and Instagram. We're Podzilla Pod. And we just um, we put different um, trivia tidbits and, um, I guess, reflections on the movie during the week there. Yeah. Cool. All right. And then finishing final words. 
you got you got five minutes to um up to five minutes to say your piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, we're it's we'd really love people to kind of check it out if if you do love cinema. Um, or if you just like lots of fights or just want something to listen to, hopefully we do have kind of cool, funny um, conversations sometimes. And again, I've I've watched a few of them. Mike has watched next to none, so we do get that different perspective. And yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a fun thing. If you want to check us out, watch it along, um, get involved. That'll be really cool. I think I think that's about all. But thanks so much, awesome. thanks so much for this. This has been this has been fun. Thanks, Jason. And um, yeah, thank you for joining us. I mean, like, it's just, uh, uh, I mean, there's so much more about this I've, I've learned today. Like, I mean, the history, the characters, and, uh, you know, we talked about so many different things and the aspect of films itself, you know, and especially Japanese cinema, it's it's got a huge history, decades yeah. and decades of history with so much good stuff. And I do appreciate it, uh, you know, because, you know, manga and anime coming out of Japan. And of course, um, there's uh, Manhua, sorry, Manhua coming out of uh, Korea. And I've watched a lot of Korean movies as well. And I think the mm. cool thing is that even though they're subtitles, I, I don't mind it, I've, you know, because it's just like reading a freaking book, right? You're yeah. reading or anyway. Yep. So it's just, you know, um, and reading, um, watching other people in other cultures and, uh, you know, do their thing, live their life. And, um, and you can, you know, and we get to enjoy that sort of uh, be a part of that through cinema and especially through things that we like, like creatures and monsters and their character uh, and their, and their universe and their culture. And I think, I mean, we've got, like you said, our universal, you know, uh, monsters are being part of our lives. Zombies, um, apart from, yeah. you know, Kong and stuff, like you got zombies, you got uh, Wolfman, uh, vampires, um, you know, what else is there? Um, gosh, Frankenstein, the whole thing, yeah. and it's just cool to see that you know that we can, uh, we have this huge, uh, amazing uh, franchise with with Godzilla that's still going after all these years, much like King Kong, way out of freaking nineteen thirties, you know, hundred, yeah. hundred, almost a hundred years later, it's still going, and I mm. think that's a, um, I like I, I like listening to what you guys were saying on the podcast and just the passion behind it, and I think, you know, I got I got a a bit out of it. I got a lot more out of just having the discussion with you. And I hope that um, people will enjoy um, yeah, tune in and listen. And the podcasts are pretty cool things, but I mean, you just put your headphones on and you carry on doing your thing, you know, uh, yeah. in your house or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's just a fun way to actually learn new things without actually, you know, Googling it, <laughs> you know, yeah. and having to type things up. You just go, it's, it's all there. And, and the other thing is the passion behind it, because this is what you guys have grew, grew up with. I found, I found that really, really cool. Uh, and hey, it's good to hear that you guys are going to expand into doing some um, you know, live streaming and stuff, as well as making videos uh, apart from podcasts. But um, And I think that's, yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing what you guys put out. And I hope that you got no. hope all the best for you guys. And yeah, I think it's, you know, I just hope that, um, you know, that pe when people join you, I mean, they all get a, they all get something out of what out of this because it's just such a cool thing to learn about another culture through cinema, and I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, awesome. thank you for joining me, no, and so I appreciate your time, man. Awesome, no, thank you. All this right, will be really, really fun. Awesome. So, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, um, Malfunction. This is the narrative. Thank you for joining us with Podzilla, J Show, Drake from Podzilla. Check them out. Like I said, anywhere. Pod are available check them out thank you so much jay show again and kakitano everybody else wherever you are be safe and take care <laughs>